you've watched and read every care guide available to you about the new species of snake that you're about to pick up. But you're about to pick up a baby, and that care guide was written about an adult. So, is there a difference in the care requirements? Today, let's go over the entire thing. How to take care of a snake from right out of the egg until it's an adult. My name's Adam. This is Jimmy. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. So the short answer is, not really. For some snakes, there are some where the care requirements from a baby to an adult is very different, but let's just go over the basics. When you bring your snake home, what do you need to do? What do you need to have ready? And what are you looking for? So the first thing is, how big is a snake going to get eventually? And how big is it right now? Because a lot of the times, if you get a baby and it's gonna grow in a year substantially, you don't wanna go and get a 10 gallon and then, oh, well, in six months, you're gonna need a 40 gallon, right? Some snakes, you can get the adult enclosure right off the hop. Hognose snakes are a great example of this. If you wanna keep a male hognose in a 20 gallon or 30 gallon enclosure for its entire life, that's a-okay, you're, you're ready to do that. And you can actually stick a baby in a 20 gallon, no problem whatsoever. Now with a retic, a reticulated python, you're not gonna wanna do this because eventually a reticulated python's gonna need a four by eight or maybe even bigger than that because they get to be massive, they're the longest snake in the world. So when a baby pops out and it's this size, you don't wanna be sticking that thing in something that's got 16 square feet or 32 square feet of floor space. It just, it doesn't really work. The nice thing is with babies, when you bring them home, you can set them up in the most minimalistic, easy to care for, as long as you have all the requirements type of enclosure. So for example, this snake here, this is a spotted python. So she's not gonna get, she, he, this is Jimmy, is not gonna get very big at all. He's gonna get to maybe like four feet, something like that. And with Jimmy, he's in an enclosure right now that's just a tub, it's this. It's a 12 quart tub. And it's very minimalistic, but it's got enough hiding spaces. It's got a human hide. This is how it's set up, right? So a human hide on the, the warm side, just a very simple hide on the cool side and the warm side that is a dry hide. And those are just made out of paper towels. And the really, reason that I use the paper towel rolls is because you can just toss them when they get soiled. And that's easy, especially if you've got a bunch of babies. Let's suppose that you're a breeder down the line, right? And you have a bunch of baby hognose, like you can watch in this video here. You're not gonna wanna be cleaning, you know, 30 tubs uh, with a bunch of furnishings. You're gonna be make it as simple as possible. So using disposable products that are gonna get thrown in the garbage anyway, like paper towel rolls, well, it's kind of perfect. So I guess the long and the short of it is, before you bring your new baby snake home, make sure it's got an enclosure, which can be as simple as a Rubbermaid enclosure or a Sterilite enclosure, whatever brand, it doesn't matter. Just one of these totes, poke some air holes in it, make sure you've got a warm side and a cool side. Whether you use something like a heat mat or heat tape or a rack, it doesn't really matter. As long as all the care requirements for that snake are taken care of, you're good to go. And as I alluded to at the beginning of the video, are those care requirements any different? The answer is usually going to be no. And there is one exception, or maybe a few. In my, like just off the top of my head here, and of course, make sure you do your research and look this up for your specific species, whatever you're gonna get. But Brazilian rainbow boas, those are very different because when they're babies, they need almost 100% humidity. They need a very high humidity. And if you leave their water bowl dry for 12 hours, 24 hours, you might have a dead snake. They're very sensitive to these type of conditions where as adults, although they still need a higher humidity, if they go, you know, 12 hours without water because they knocked it over, you're not gonna be finding a dead snake in the morning. They become more resilient as they grow up. And I get this question a lot. Can I keep my baby snake in the adult enclosure? Because I don't wanna be spending X amount here and then they grow up a little bit and they grow up here. It's like, you know, how you buy, if you got kids and you buy baby clothes and then they grow out of them before they even get born. Well, it's the same thing with a lot of enclosures, right? People have this same sort of fear. But the thing with snakes is a lot of them grow really small. Take a, a Dumeril's boa, for example, right? This is Marley. This is a full-grown Dumeril's boa. And this one here is Cubone. And this is an adolescent snake. So very different in size. And also I keep them in different size enclosures. In fact, Marley's enclosure is literally twice as big as the enclosure for Cubone. Now I probably could keep a baby snake in a bigger enclosure, but here's the one thing you want to think about. If it's going to be a big, massive difference, we're talking about 
you know, like the Retech we talked about, where at the beginning, you could probably keep them in a 28 or a 41 quart enclosure. And then as adults, you're gonna need to keep them in something that's four foot by eight foot uh, as a floor space. Well, you're not gonna wanna keep that baby in something that big. And here's why. You wanna make sure that these snakes are thriving in captivity so they can find their water, they're not stressed out, they've got enough places to hide, they feel like they kind of know their environment. And some people are gonna balk at this in the comment section, but here's the thing. I understand that in the wild, baby snakes are in the wild. There's no 28 quart enclosures. It's just, here you go, best of luck. But in the wild, most baby snakes don't live. They get eaten by predators, they starve to death, they just, they die. Uh, most animals in general in the wild do not make it to adulthood, especially something that comes out as small as, say, this. And this isn't even as small as they are when they're babies. I mean, you can see in this clip here, this uh, the snake's about half the size that it is now, and that's only been about three months of really regular feeding, because when they're young, they do grow fast, and then they kind of slow down a little bit. So for certain species, yes, hognose snakes, garter snakes, if you want to stick them in a 40 gallon enclosure right off the hop, I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Retech, don't do that. So it does vary depending on the species that you're gonna keep. But just to circle back around to the cost thing, you can just use plastic enclosures that literally cost you 10 or 12 bucks or less until they become big enough to have a really nice enclosure. Or, I mean, you can go on Kijiji, Craigslist, whatever the classified site is in your area, and you can find a 10 gallon for 10 bucks or a 20 gallon for 20 or 30 bucks. So you can upgrade them, but you don't need to have something brand new from a store. And then of course it gives you time to, until they get to adulthood, which might take two to five years or maybe even longer, depending on the species, to get that nice enclosure, whatever it is that you're gonna have at the end, super awesome. If you're looking for ideas, in the comment section below, there's a great link for PVC enclosures, which can be great for snakes, lizards, all sorts of different things. Click the link. I honestly can't say enough good things about cages and enclosures. That is kind of where we're going with the reptile room moving forward. But if you wanna see what it looks like now, right here. And one more thing, the food is gonna be different as well. So no, in no circumstance that I know about, can you feed what you're gonna to feed to the adult snake to the baby? It just, it doesn't work. Most baby snakes are gonna eat things like pinky mice, although there are exceptions, I know that. I'm just talking about the ones that I keep, like baby hognose snakes and baby ball pythons, which are coming soon if you see these eggs, it's pretty cool, right? Or, you know, baby milk snakes, I've got one of those. Or uh, baby spotted pythons, whatever. These are gonna eat pinkies. As they get older, they're gonna switch onto much larger food. So a ball python is gonna eat something like a very tiny rat, a weaned rat or the weanling, they come in different names depending, something around this size when it's a baby and when it's an adult, it's gonna eat something this size, which is a medium sized rat or some will even eat adult sized rats. And when you talk about boas, they're gonna eat that same type of size rat that I showed you at the beginning here for baby ball pythons, but they might get up to really large rats or even if you get a huge boa, maybe even a rabbit. So it is gonna change. Okay, you guys get the point. We can move on from babies to adolescents. Now, once your snake that's this size gets to something that's say this size, and it's not a baby, but it's also not an adult, right? This is Cubone who we talked about earlier. This is something where you're kind of in the middle. And in a lot of cases, you're gonna be able to move up to that big enclosure. And I know this is a sticking point, which is why I'm talking about it so much. People get freaked out about having to change enclosures all the time because they're not cheap. And I understand that. This girl here, I actually kept in a 28 quart tub for a little while. Now we've got her in this really cool PVC enclosure, which is split in half, and I can keep her here for a little while, and then she'll move up to something that Marowak is in right now. I think I might have called Marowak Marley at the beginning. Her name was Marley, and then we changed it to Marowak. This is Marowak. So a lot of the times now, if your snake is in a giant, for example, just move it right up, move it right up. But the most important thing is that now this animal, although before when they were babies, you gave them enough hiding spaces, which is a big thing, make sure your snake has a lot of places to hide. Because in my opinion, there's no such thing as a, a enclosure that's too big unless they don't have places to hide and move around. And the big part is make sure they've got places to hide behind as they navigate the cage. Like you see here, there's foliage everywhere. So the snake in this enclosure is gonna be able to move from the hot side to the cool side undercover the entire time. Because a lot of the time snakes, when they feel scared and they're on the hot side, but there's no way to get to the cool side without being seen by a predator, they would think, because it's an open space. 
they'll just sit there and maybe they'll get uncomfortable and maybe they'll get sick. So the idea is to give them, okay, you get the point, make sure they feel secure. All right, the next thing is food is gonna change at this point too. And I, people always ask me, okay, what size does my ball python have to be? What size does my hognose snake have to be to change it from pinkies to the next size? Don't worry about that. Think about it like this. The size of feeder is gonna be about the size of the biggest point in the snake. So the width of the feeder is the size of the biggest point of the snake, or sometimes even a little bit bigger, right? So there's really no way to say at two months, switch it from a four gram to a 20 gram, like there's no rule like that. So you're gonna wanna make a larger leap. And what I always say too is, once your snake is eating something like, and it's no trouble whatsoever a snake should take a few minutes to swallow something if it's the appropriate size not forever and not struggling by any means but if they take it and go gobble 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 and that's it it's, it's over then uh it's time to move them up to the next size and this is like super technical right like is this helping and one last thing about feeding as you get in the middle of a snake's life or in the middle of its major growth let's say as babies, you're gonna need to feed them more often, which means they're gonna be more poop. So, someone like Jimmy here is eating twice a week. Someone like, I don't have names for them, but these are the baby hognose snakes. These guys are eating every three days, or sometimes I'll feed them three times a week. It just depends how well they're eating and how well they're pooping. With an adolescent snake or something in the middle of its major growth at the beginning of its life, you can slow this down and even go to once a week for certain species. So yes, it definitely does depend. A lot of the times colubrids will eat more than say a boa or a python because a boa might only eat every four or even every six weeks as an adult where you're never really going to be feeding a corn snake or um, you know a king snake something like that every six weeks you're always going to go you know once a week or once every two weeks or somewhere in the middle once every 10 days something like that so it does slow down quite a bit which is nice because less poop and the really wicked thing about having a snake that has done its babyhood, like, is that even a word? I like it. It's babyhood. They're going to be eating better, probably. This is something that a lot of snakes, hognose snakes is what I breed. It's hard to get them to eat. But once they get eating, they're normally pretty good. They don't really go off food anymore. So once you get them eating, things get a little bit easier for feeding. But I mean, if you're buying something and not breeding it, it should be eating well anyway, which is something to look for. When you're buying a baby snake, make sure that it looks healthy. There's a bunch of different ways. Clear eyes. Clear eyes, full hearts. It's clear mouth, clear vent, but always ask, what is it eating? How well is it eating? And if you buy something that is gonna eventually need to eat rats, I always suggest that you stick it on rats to start with because sometimes it's a little bit difficult to switch them over. So ball python people, if you're looking for a baby ball python, ask the breeder what they're eating. If they're eating rats regularly, a-okay. I think we can wrap it up here with, for the most part, the easiest part of a snake's life when it gets to be an adult. Adult snakes are going to be bigger than your baby and adolescent snakes. Captain Obvious Award right here. Once you get something to the size of Pikachu or whatever the adult size of your snake ends up being, it's gonna be a little bit easier most of the time. Now there are certain types of snakes like Pikachu which just go off food for whatever reason, whenever they want, but most species that I know about or most commonly kept species is the way I should phrase it better, they are good. Once they get on food, they're on food. So we can just put that whole eating thing to bed. But of course, the size of the animal is going to be bigger. Pikachu is going to eat a medium-sized rat, where the babies that he probably produced are going to be eating fuzzies or weaned or whatever they call them in your area. And of course, no matter how you keep a snake, if you decide to keep it in a rack, super simple in a tub, or if you want to go all out and make a beautiful enclosure for these animals, well, this is the time to do it. This is the time to spend your money if that's what you're going to do. When they're babies, you don't want to be decking out a new enclosure every six months or a year. With these guys, when they're this size, well, now you can do it because they're never going to need a bigger enclosure. Pikachu is about four and a half, almost five feet. That's as big as ball pythons get as adults. Now, adult snakes do grow throughout the course of their life, but adult snakes don't grow, you know, a foot a year as adults. They might gain another couple inches, something like that. The girth will always change depending on how you feed them. But in general, once you get an adult, they're not gonna have another growth spurt and all of a sudden grow another two feet most of the time. So Pikachu is in his forever home. Looks beautiful, I'm happy with it. But another couple things too is everything's gonna get bigger as well. The water bowl is gonna get bigger. Most snakes, you wanna give them a space where they can get inside their water bowl completely. Uh, of course, with a retic, maybe, or a berm, it might not be possible, but with him it is, so he's got one big enough. The hides are gonna need to be bigger. The enclosure is gonna be bigger. 
everything's gonna be a little bit bigger, but you'll never have to upgrade ever again once they get to full size. Plus at this time, if you're gonna have a tameable snake, a tamed snake, you've done the work when they're babies, when the bites hurt, hurt less, or you know when they're just a little bit easier to deal with because they're not big. And now you've got something that's used to being handled. And with Pikachu, he's used to being handled. This is a really great snake. He's my go-to guy. And basically all the adult snakes that I have are, are really cool snakes. They're all handleable and they're all very nice. So that's just something that yeah, I guess I should have put in the beginning. If you've got a baby, do the work, make them tameable and make them handleable. And if you wanna know how, boom, I got a video all about it. And to wrap it up, most importantly, if you've got a snake that's full size, well, that's what your care guide was written about. So if your care guide says a certain percentage of humidity and heat, generally it's the same for babies as it is for adults, but you can be sure that's what the author or the video creator was writing about or making the video about, is if I do a care guide about ball pythons, which you can see here, it's about this. It's not about a baby, it's about this. So although it's very similar or almost identically the same, when I make these videos, I have in mind what you're gonna have for the longest, which is an adult animal. And I think that's it. Most important thing, because I called this a care guide, I think, and whatever this video was called eventually, uh, do your research, always. Don't just listen to some bald guy with a ball python in his basement. Like, do your research for yourself and figure out what you need to do in order to have a healthy animal. And of course, I've been talking about feeding forever. And feeding a big collection can get a little bit expensive, but I want to say thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys, at this point, are basically taking care of feeding the, the collection. All the rodent orders are kind of taken care of. So if you want to see something like brand new episodes, a couple days early. If you want to know about the new animals in my collection weeks or months before I talk about them on the channel, progress pictures, all that sort of stuff, Patreon, as little as a dollar a month. For everybody who watches these videos, it is a pleasure to make them. I sincerely thank you guys for watching them. Everyone who's joined the Discord server, which is free, of course. Thank you guys, I, I really appreciate it. And I think I've plugged everything now. Hit subscribe, see you on Monday.